such a pleasure to be here. Uh, and uh, definitely mindful, mindfulness does help right now. Uh, I'm here with giving a lot of credit, obviously, to Dr. Jeffrey Nguyen and uh, Shelley Bouchard, who are the founders. Oh, sorry, do you press this? No. The blue button. Am I missing it up? <laughs> Oh, the green button, okay, perfect. Awesome, sounds good, sorry. Um, and uh, Shelly Bouchard, advanced practice nurse. Uh, the project I will speak about is the PACE telemedicine uh, project. And as you know, PACE is part of uh, Corinth and Colitis Canada initiative. So PACE was intended to bring together uh, IBD specialists uh, to collectively advance best practices and elevate the standards of care for patients uh, the main goals is really to uh, improve outcomes, improve patient outcomes, address current gaps in the quality of IBD care, and also provide evidence to create changes in the Canadian public health care system. So just to recap, uh, those are our goals, and Corner Class Canada has funded this project for four years. Um, the PACE network includes different sites, and the one that I will be discussing today is the IVD telemedicine program at uh, Mount Sinai Hospital. And just to give you a little bit more information about myself as well, so I come from a medical background family. Both my parents are physicians back in Egypt. Uh, and when we grew up, before coming here 11 years ago, there was always access issues to specialized care. So my dad is a pediatrician, my mom is obstetrician, patients would have to travel all the way to Cairo to, to get that quality of care. Um, and I remember also mission trips where my parents would go for a few weeks at, at a time to reach out to the sites that require uh, access. We are lucky enough in uh, Ontario and in Canada to have such a telemedicine project. Uh, and I will speak more about the, uh, the progress that we have had. First of all, I would like to introduce this article that was published in the Journal of the Canadian Association of Gastroenterologists. I would strongly recommend, if you have time, <laughs> to have a look at the, the article itself. Uh, I will be providing most of the findings from this, uh, from this article. Uh, it was carried by Dr. Jeffrey Nguyen and also Shelley Bouchard, advanced practice nurse. So first of all, I guess we have to introduce what is telemedicine. I think most of us understand it. So it's the concept of using video conferencing through a secure confidential network uh, to see the specialist, uh, so between the patient and the specialist. Uh, for decades, several studies have investigated the use of telecommunications to advance healthcare, and telemedicine was one of the big advancements that, uh, that we have. And if we're examining the impact of telemedicine on uh, care, it is changing the healthcare delivery method. So it provides more practical, cost-saving, uh, and high-quality care to patients. Uh, the PACE IBD telemedicine program at Mount Sinai Hospital uh, provides care for patients in rural and remote communities in Ontario. So those that are underserviced uh, based on ge geographical location. Now the next stage is in Ontario, there's the needs assessment that was done by Dr. Jeffrey Nguyen showed this significant geographical disparity uh, throughout Ontario. And I will show this in more details and graphics as well. Uh, so out of, I guess, what do you think the recommended wait time for a patient to be seen by a gastroenterologist should be recommended, sorry. <laughs> it's two weeks, it's 14 days. The, the national audits show that the wait time is closer to uh, 126 days. So it's significantly higher and this has to do partially also because of that geographical disparity. With the current financial constraints facing our healthcare system and all the cuts that are happening as well, telemedicine can be utilized in non-urban settings to save on unnecessary utilization of emergent health services and other costs that accrue from traveling to see a gastroenterologist for medical services 
that are not necessarily, do not necessarily require physical presence. And in the literature, telemedicine and rheumatology uh, has suggested significant uh, patient rheumatologist partnership. Uh, and in fact, telerheumatology was found to be feasible and acceptable mode of care delivery by patients. In IBD, some clinicians have studied telemedicine and it was found to increase patient satisfaction with the care and it was found to increase patient's uh, control over their IBD symptoms. Now, as part of our program, our PACE IBD telemedicine program, it's not just about implementation, it's also about evaluation uh, of the program and it's a rigorous evaluation process. What I will be sharing today is just those two points. Uh, so the, uh, the cost saving and the wait time for patients to be seen via telemedicine. So there's two parts of this talk, the needs assessment, which was done by Dr. Jeffrey Nguyen in that article. And then the other part will be introduction of the PACE telemedicine program and what we have done and the progress that we've had so far. Uh, so this was done in Ontario Health Administrative Databases. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Nguyen looked for patients who were diagnosed with IBD uh, between 1999 till uh, 2008 and followed the care, uh, the health care utilization through to 2013. And there was three key indicators that he really investigated. So the number of gastroenterologists per capita the early gastroenterology care and the continuous gastroenterology care. Just to make it simple, the early gastroenterology care is basically the percentage of patients that were seen within 12 months of diagnosis. And then the continuous gastroenterology care is the percentage of patients that were seen within nine to 15 months for five consecutive, re consecutive years. So these are the key indicators that were examined and here is what we found. <laughs> so I know it's hard, uh, it's hard to see all the numbers here from the screen that I am seeing, but the gastroenterologist per capita did vary significantly throughout all the different regions in Ontario. You can see in Toronto, it's 6.21, and in other areas, it goes down to 1.04, northeast and northwest is 1.23. So that's the number of gastroenterologists per capita, basically meaning the number of GIs that can provide for patients uh, with IBD. When it came to early specialist care, you could see the percentages varied significantly across the regions again. Toronto, one of the highest, 78%. And then it can go down to 28, 39%. When it came to continuous specialist care, again, the same trend you see. Toronto would be the highest, 46. And then it goes down to 33, 30% Northeast and Northwest territories. So these, these indicators uh, showed Sorry, go back. Oh, it's okay. These indicators showed that uh, there's certain lens that we really need to address. So those were the Northeast, Northwest, uh, Muskoka, and Erin. So those lens were basically the target locations where, where we, we need to, to address the, uh, the lack of access. The promoting access and care through centers of excellence is uh, telemedicine program is basically improving that access and the quality of care for patients in these regions. It includes uh, seven gastroenterologists specialized in IBD. Uh, those are all world-renowned, uh, you know, top-notch specialists that we are lucky to have at Mount Sinai. Three colorectal surgeons, uh, two nurses that are facilitating the care uh, and following up with patient concerns, and as well as one dietitian that is dedicated uh, to IBD. And all of these services are much needed in rural and remote communities. To be eligible for the program, a uh, patient must reside in at least 100 kilometers away from Mount Sinai Hospital. 
uh, or telemedicine program accept referrals uh, for either diagnosis of IBD, ongoing management, or a second opinion regarding management of IBD. So if there's a complex patient, he can be also referred to the telemedicine program. And it's a simple referral process that's online. It can be faxed to the telemedicine office uh, and triaged based on urgency. As part of the referral process as well, if there's a complex patient that requires surgical intervention, he can be seen or video conferenced with a surgeon. Uh, and potentially, if they require hospitalization or transfer from a hospital to another, this can be arranged. And part of the Page Telemedicine program was this old app. I'm lucky that we have this new amazing app, My Gut. It's such a, a great promising app to use. I'm looking forward to use it. Um, but the old app that we used was assessing quality of life, disease activity, and symptoms. And it will be done on a monthly basis, so patients will be reminded to fill this on a monthly basis. And if there's any trends uh, going you know, downwards, then uh, the nurse will be coordinating a follow-up visit or urgent investigative tests. As part of our telemedicine, uh, we analyzed the first 18 months in the article. So that was from June 2016 till end of November 2017. And the two main uh, data that was analyzed was the wait times and the cost saving analysis. So in terms of wait times, there was two groups that, uh, or a group and a subgroup that were analyzed. The first one is between the time, the date of the referral to the date that they were seen by a gastroenterologist. And then the subgroup was the date that they requested to follow up based on flares or IVD symptoms, and then the date that they were uh, seen by a GI. In terms of cost saving, uh, this was solely based on the Northern Travel Grant. So that Northern Travel Grant is only eligible, like you're only eligible for it if you're in certain lens. Not everyone is eligible for it. Um, and it, it is a travel reimbursement plan by the Ministry of Health. So in our first 18 months, this is what we had. 99 patients, 186 telemedicine visits, and the numbers that you can see in the first visit, second visit, third visit, and fourth visit, and fifth visit. So the number of patients that have five visits were three at that time. Now this number has expanded dramatically, uh, and I think we're, we're gonna update the values uh, in the next few years. There's many more patients. The telemedicine sites, just over 18 months, there was 61 different telemedicine sites. So patients would travel to these sites to be seen by a specialist uh, through video conferencing with us. Uh, and now it's over 80 sites. So it is expanding again. And you can see in the map uh, that the sites are throughout Ontario. It's not concentrated in a particular area. The average distance of travel that was avoided by our telemedicine cohort was about 818 kilometers per visit. If you look at the cost saving just from the Northern Travel Grant, so just based on patients that qualified for the Northern Travel Grant, it would be around 48,000. This is not to include all the uh, indirect costs of taking time off work or for patients who were not eligible for the Northern Travel Grant or for the actual costs of taking someone with you to, to the hospital. And the wait times, the median wait times from the time to referral to the initial telemedicine consultation was 17 days. So remember that recommended was 14 days. 45% of patients attended their telemedicine appointments within the four day, 14 days uh, that was recommended. And the wait times between uh, when the patient was flaring and, and the time that they were seen by AGI was a median of 8.5 days. So again, 83% of the patients who required a telemedicine visit for active IBD symptoms were seen within the two-week target wait time. So 
So what are the major findings, or what is the take home kind of message from the PACE IV telemedicine program? I'm sorry, I gave you a lot more maybe statistical and maps, but I think it's, it's to make the, the image obvious. Uh, over the 18 months of its operation, uh, we have demonstrated that the PACE telemedicine program provided a feasible approach to bridging regional disparities in access to specialist care for IBD. The telemedicine program's median wait times for new consultations uh, was 17 days, and for active IBD symptoms were 8.5, considerably lower than what is in the national audits of 126. The cost saving of approximately nearly 50,000, just based on the Northern Travel Grant. And one of the key advantages of our program is its multidisciplinary nature. So you can see a GI, you can see a surgeon, you can see a, a dietitian, if need be. What we are looking forward for uh, is also uh, getting more specialties involved like psychiatry, like rheumatology, and like dermatology. Work in progress right now is obviously, there is limited access to certain spots in OTN. There are certain areas that are under service. They don't have an OTN studio, Ontario Telemedicine Network Studio. Uh, there is a bit of lack of awareness of our program within the northern Ontario areas. But we have done a lot of webinars in northern uh, family health teams uh, and using our social media outlet as well to outreach to patients that require uh, IVD specialists. And finally, the, f the last part of our analysis will be including patient reported outcomes. So the prior studies uh, in other fields suggest that telemedicine systems are associated with improved quality of life, patient satisfaction, and decreased resource utilization and indirect costs. What we are doing right now is an annual questionnaire for patients uh, that consent to take part of the PACE study. And through this questionnaire, it's these validated questionnaires that examine self-reported outcomes. And then at the end of four years, Dr. Noon will also do a uh, complete ICES analysis of healthcare utilization for our telemedicine cohort and also for in-person patients that do match with, uh, with our telemedicine cohort. So in conclusion, uh, the implementation of telemedicine services in IBD is highly feasible and it can reduce the wait times uh, to see a GI, and it can meet the nationally recommended targets, and also it leads to cost savings. Uh, the multidisciplinary nature of our program can serve as a model for the development of telemedicine programs for other chronic diseases uh, in Ontario. But we're also trying to implement that, I believe, in other PACE sites uh, in Canada, which will be very promising to see. The final part, Oh, okay. <laughs> this is our social media. So if you, if you would like to, to follow us on social media, we do um, share resources for, uh, for patients, for our telemedicine patients. Uh, so if you do have any resources to share, you can also contact us through the social media presence. Um, and I wanted to discuss briefly on, on the online cognitive behavior. Oh, there is more slides, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was not ordered as what I thought. Okay, so uh, the online resources as well um, is a new initiative that we, we are taking part of is the cognitive behavioral therapy. So although we know depression and anxiety are highly treatable mm -hmm. conditions, they are often under-recognized and under-treated in patients with IBD. Uh, CBT refers to a group of interventions that share the notion that kind of cognitive factors influence mental disorders and psychological distress. And adjusting that cognitive factors can contribute to less emotional distress and behavioral problems. And then we, all, we know that the advantage of psychological treatments over medication is their ability to sustain improved depression and anxiety symptoms in patients post-treatment. And the resource that we're using for our telemedicine patients uh, is the big white wall. 
It's an online platform. It's a 24-7 online support platform um, providing online resources modules to address anxiety and depression. Uh, it is funded by Ontario uh, Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care. It has eight weeks module sessions. Four, four of them address the anxiety and stress. Four of them address depression. Patients can sign in and access peer support groups as well. Uh, and they can uh, access online resources from the Big White Wall. So it's one of the studies that we are examining as part of the CAN-IVD research grant. Uh, grant. Um, and once the results are available, we will share how it is effective. So thank you very much. Uh, much appreciated for you listening. And also thanks to Dr. Noen and Shelley Bouchard who made this program successful. Thank you.